I'm Robert Raw. Welcome to the Regional Anesthesia Study Centre of Iowa, or REST. Landmark-based nerve blocks are blind techniques. They utilize surface anatomy to identify the position to insert the needle, the direction to advance the needle, and the plane within which to redirect the needle if needed. Successful final needle tip position is then confirmed by elicitation of paresthesia or muscle contractions. Best landmark based nerve block techniques rely as much as possible on fixed bony reference points that are consistent in position between all patients. One should avoid landmarks that are subject to inter-individual variation or to uncertain interpretation. A regional anesthesia standard hand size is 7.5 centimeters across four fingers. Some blocks use a portion of that distance such as three fingers or two fingers breadth. Uh, we can do a single shot nerve stimulator guided femoral nerve block. We're going to use the four three finger uh, surface landmark method. The femoral nerve passes into the leg posterior to the inguinal ligament and lateral to the femoral artery. The nerve also lies in an entirely separate facial compartment to that of the artery. It is for this reason periarterial nerve block techniques fail to block the femoral nerve. The femoral vein lies medial to the artery. The femoral nerve branches very widely lateral to medial after entering the leg. The branches also divide into a deeper division group and a superficial division group of nerves. Performing the nerve block too distal can result in only one division being blocked and not the other. The deep division is usually the surgically preferred one to block. Stimulation of the deep division results in a quadriceps muscle twitch. Stimulation of the superficial division results in a sartorius muscle twitch. A nerve block of the deep division alone will fail to anesthetize the skin over the anterior thigh and the knee, while a nerve block of only the superficial division may fail to block the knee joint capsule and the quadriceps muscle. Best femoral nerve block success results from performing the nerve block just below the inguinal ligament before this extensive nerve branching occurs. The groin crease has no relationship to the inguinal ligament. In young, thin individuals, the groin crease will be 2 cm distal to the inguinal ligament. And in older, flabby fleshed persons, the groin crease can be 20 cm distal to the inguinal ligament. Therefore, do not use the groin crease as a universal landmark reference to, to determine any point to do a femoral nerve block. The femoral artery is equally a poor marker of the relative position of the femoral nerve. It is notoriously hard to reliably identify with palpation, even with experienced hands. Enlarged superficial arterial branches in the region can also be effective pretenders of the femoral artery. The only consistent superficial anatomical markers for the femoral nerve are the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle which indicate the anchor points of the inguinal ligament. Also the femoral nerve has a remarkably consistent position relative to these bony points. These bony points are also not subject to variation between individuals. Mark the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle and the inguinal ligament between them. Next place one finger of a hand firmly onto the supramedial aspect of anterior superior iliac spine. Then place four fingers of the other hand medial to the finger on the anterior superior iliac spine and mark a skin point medial and adjacent to the four fingers. That point should be two centimeters distal to the inguinal ligament. Next place a finger of one hand onto the pubic tubercle. Pushing hard through the pubic fat and onto the tubercle causes the patient a deep visceral discomfort 
which confirms the accuracy of the bony point identified. Then measure off a distance of three fingers to lateral from the finger on the pubic tubercle. Lastly, if you mark a spot lateral to the three fingers and two centimeters below the inguinal ligament, it should coincide with the first point marked. If the two points do not coincide, review the bony landmarks again until the points do coincide. It is possible to misidentify the anterior inferior iliac spine, especially in thin patients, as the anterior superior iliac spine if one does not specifically seek the supromedial aspect of the anterior superior iliac spine. Also, if obesity and redundant hypermobile abdominal tissue makes marking the anterior superior iliac spine difficult, it is sufficient to only use the pubic tubercle as reference point. In fact, in hyperobese individuals, when using electrostimulation techniques alone, the pubic tubercle may be the only possible identifiable landmark in the region, even if with some mild difficulty. We identify the anterior superior iliac spine, it's that point there. We identify the pubic tubercle, which is just over here. You know you've got it because it causes a bit of discomfort. Uh, we join the two together, we have the inguinal ligament. Um, over here I have marked his groin crease. In a young person it's quite close together. In an older person the groin crease can be uh, 15 centimeters down the leg. So if you use the groin crease as a supposed landmark and you go two centimeters below it, um, you're going to be doing a mid-thigh femoral block that's going to be very incomplete. So you really want to get as high as you can and as close to the inguinal ligament as what the patient's anatomy will permit you. Bearing in mind, some people are very fat and very big. Okay, for this fourth three finger landmark, place one finger on the anterior uh, superior iliac spine, measure all four fingers of a standard block hand to medial and two centimeters below the inguinal ligament. That marks a spot there. You can verify it by the fact that uh, if you place a finger on the pubic tubercle uh, and you put three fingers next to your finger, three fingers should bring you back to that mark. So as you can see, it kind of very far my landmark. So th that's the spot I'm going to do a femoral nerve block. Okay, this only needs a 50 millimeter needle. I'm just going to pop through skin. And I like a fast twitch. 1.2. Now I'm going to advance the needle slowly. I should feel one pop. So I believe I felt, I should feel another pop. Okay, I don't have a femoral nerve, so now I'm going to explore an arc. I know the femoral nerve runs in the longitudinal axis like this. So now I explore an arc across it at right angles. The safer side is to lateral, so I'll explore to lateral before I come back and explore to medial. Okay, now we're straight into femoral nerve. This is patella twitch. We can dial down. Point one. All procedures in this educational material are filmed on healthy volunteers receiving actual needle insertions during our regular educational courses. If you wish to attend a rescue hands-on course and ultrasound guided regional anesthesia, please book via our website or email us.